So I went to the same school from pre-K through 12th grade. I met my best friend when I was two years old in toddler tumbling. Our parents took us to gymnastics together and then that was just kind of that. I've had one boyfriend my entire life. Uh, we met in the eighth grade and he is now my husband. I know, when I lived in, when I lived in Memphis, I actually worked at the same school as my sister and I was next door neighbors with my mom. So while it's fair to say that I often exhibit a lot of outward enthusiasm and energy, um, I'm really quite an introverted and reserved person. And so when I thought of the road less traveled and the poem and you know, all that kind of goes into that, it makes me feel a little overwhelmed and a little intimidated. You know, like here I am standing at this fork in the road, you know, do I choose left or do I choose right? Some kind of really big moment that's gonna be life altering and changing, right? Some decision that is bold and unique and different. And while I think that many, many people have had an experience like that, everyone has not. But why does the road less traveled have to be like this? Why does it have to be one big moment that kind of changes your life? What if each and every one of us are all walking on the road less traveled? We are all walking on a road never traveled. And it looks a lot less like a road and more like a jungle. And as we're going through this jungle of life and creating our road never traveled, step by step with every decision that we make, how do we pay attention to all the factors that exist around us, these forces that if we can place an intentional effort on, can help us move in the direction that we want to go? For me, the things that have made a big difference are um, timing, attitude, and energy. I remember to this day my parents dropping me off at college. I went to school about eight and a half hours away from home and since I had one best friend since I was two and I lived next door to my mom, um, you know you can kind of imagine how I was feeling in that moment. But my parents dropped me off and I waved goodbye. Um, I went to sleep in the dorms. I woke up the next day so excited to start my very first day as a college student. The date of my first day of school was September the 11th, 2001. So timing. Daniel Pink wrote a book called When. Instead of a how-to book, it's a when-to book. And I thought it was so interesting, right? Like he told us what we all know, which timing is everything. And time exists, whether you are gonna focus on it or not. So the challenge for me became, how am I going to focus on this event in my life to move my journey forward? And what I decided then and there when I came home from school and sat in the dorm room on the floor with a lot of people who I did not know, was that I was not gonna let terrorism cause me to be afraid. And instead, I was going to travel the world, I was gonna live in new places and meet new people. And so I decided to travel abroad. I just decided that I was gonna go and live in I then went on and lived in Costa Rica a number of times. And after traveling and living in other countries and learning Spanish, I decided I really wanna be a teacher. So I became a teacher. Um, and teaching has, has now always been my passion. It's something that really, really means a great deal to me. I worked in a school that I loved. Um, and so when they announced that they were gonna be hiring for a middle school principal, I was like, I'm gonna apply for this job. So I did, I, you know, I applied for the job, I did the interview, I went to the committee meetings, and then I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And I actually found out that I did not get that job uh, whenever they sent an email to the whole school announcing all the finalists who would be coming to visit. So it was really embarrassing. Um, and I felt discouraged and kind of confused and disappointed. But I decided then and there, well, I can focus on the negative or I can have a positive attitude. I spoke to the head of the school, I got some clarification, I kept working really hard. And a month later they said, you know what though, we think you'd be a great assistant. So they moved me into 
school of assist assistant principal. They later asked me to be the principal of that school. I worked there for a number of years. Um, I felt really enriched. I felt like I um, also helped the community move forward. But eventually, this energy in me started to change. I was like, I want to do something new. I want to do something different. So my husband and I decided to take the leap of faith, accept a new job, and move to Florida. We moved about a thousand miles away from home and the idea of energy really started to come to mind. So have any of you ever moved, like packed up boxes and moved your things? All right, so you know it's like something like this, like nice neat boxes, everything's bubble wrapped, put in its place, it's taped and it's labeled, it's full of hopes and dreams and joys and wishes. And then all of a sudden you get to the last box and you're like, okay, spatula, my toothbrush and dog food. All right, put this in the U-Haul. Right? So that's what we did. Uh, we traveled a thousand miles from Memphis, Tennessee to South Florida. And a few days later, I realized, you know what? That physical energy is nothing compared to the mental energy of making a move like that. And I started having a lot of um, fears and anxieties and worries. You know, what if I didn't like this job? And what if I didn't make any friends? And what if I just always missed my family as much as I miss them right now? And I decided, you know, I'm going to have to get control of this mental energy because this energy is going to be there. I'm the one who's going to choose how it's going to impact me. So I started doing yoga. I started doing meditation, practicing, practicing mindfulness, and showing gratitude for the things that I had that I enjoyed. I even moved to the beach, right? And because of controlling my mental energy, um, I found that I was able to have success that I'm able to stand before you today saying that I get to work with and support and inspire and be inspired by 350 to 400 middle school teachers and students every single day. And so that is now where I am standing directly in front of you on my road never traveled. But by focusing on timing and attitude and energy, we are all able to create our own unique journey. It's little by little and inch by inch, brick by brick and step by step that we are all taking our own road never traveled. And it's really quite the journey. Thank you.